hi welcome to my channel and in this video we are going to understand about how to use pwm in pic 18f microcontroller and uh, first of all why do we need pwm pwm is used for to control speed of a dc motor and uh, of course we know that servo motor also needs a pwm signal so let me show you a diagram for a servo motor and uh, by generating a PWM for servo motor, you can definitely generate PWM for any of the applications like for to control motor as I mentioned and uh, to control the light intensity uh, and so and so forth, right? So uh, here is this diagram and in this, in this diagram you could see that uh, servo motor actually it rotates in only 0 to 180 degree and uh, uh, if you give a pulse of one milliseconds and the total duration of that uh, PWM signal is period of uh, of that PWM signal is 20 milliseconds and uh, duty cycle that's what we call uh, as like you know uh, 50 percent duty cycle means 50 percent on and 50 percent off so here uh, we are going to mention what percentage of we are going to understand how to set the percentage of a duty cycle within a, uh, a pic 18f uh, code and uh, to generate a PWM, you know. So for that, let's get on to um, data sheet and understand how can we use this PWM uh, within a PIC 18F microcontroller. Okay. So here I have this uh, PDF uh, of 18F, this microcontroller, this particular mic microcontroller series. But uh, if you could be able to write code for one 18F controller, you will be able to write code for any controller. Okay, so let's directly jump on to uh, the PWM section of this uh, particular IC. And here I have this bookmark available so that I can directly go to uh, that particular section where I could see that there is a pulse width modulation. Uh, we have se separate mode and we have this uh, CCP mode. You have uh, two um, PWM. Um, you know there are two ways to generate PWM like using a capture compare mode a capture com compare PWM mode and we have this PWM section completely separate okay so in this video we're going to understand about how to use this completely separate PWM model okay and in some later video we'll understand how to use a CCP mode uh, a CCP uh, that is uh, capture compare and PWM in a PWM mode okay so let's first understand this PWM uh, mode so here i uh, here there are some dedicated pins which are uh, uh, you know giving you pwm signals and this is the block diagram that you could see where it needs a timer okay any specific timer let's for example say here it has uh, it is using timer 2 okay so timer 2 is used to generate a pwm signal and here is this uh, this extra register which is deciding the duty cycle of that particular pwm so here with this timer you generate you decide a period and with this you decide a duty cycle okay and uh, uh, we are going to understand now what what the period and duty cycle is like for example so here in this data sheet it is shown that this is the pulse width for which it is going to be on and this is the entire period of a um, you know pwm signal right so um, we need to understand how can we decide this period and how can we decide this pulse width right so definitely you must be knowing that in peak uh, if you wanted to do anything that means you need to write specific registers like like for example here it has got uh, multiple registers for this particular section like for example uh, this register timer timer scale no no this is not a register let's go on get on to the register section yeah this is the register section so this is the pwm control control register then this uh, ccp tmr s1 uh, register so here are multiple uh, registers that you need to write on but it is always quite difficult to understand uh, what pin functions what and how to write that into a code but in this video i'm going to show you uh, a easiest way that MPLAB has provided us to you know there is no need to get into multiple calculations now there is a um, matlab code configurator configurator so uh, with this module with this module in a uh, in a mplab id you could generate uh, all of these register settings in very easiest way right so that's what i'm going to show you okay so first of all we have seen what is uh, uh, pwm and uh, we are going to use uh, definitely a dedicated section in this particular video 
so in here we have understood that there are multiple registers to be written and that's what we are going to understand how can we do it in an easy way okay let's jump on to uh, mplab and let's understand how to use that okay so here i have this mplab uh, uh, window mplab x actually so mplab x id earlier it wasn't it, it was only mplab uh, now the latest id which is again and four to five years old now uh, right so mplabs mplex id so within this i've already created a project um, creating a project is is very uh, easy way you know uh, i'm not going to show that in this video but uh, here i've already created a video and i am going to show you how can you use this mplab code configurator to generate a code for you right so let's get on to that so i have created a project here and uh, i am now going to click this button this particular button shows that this is mplab code configurator and this particular um, uh, section of this uh, mplab is going to uh, give you an easiest way to generate the code okay to to calculate the register values that's what we are interested in so let's get on to that uh, so i've clicked on uh, mcc for the first time it takes quite amount of time let's be patient okay so i'm interested in uh, uh, this mcc classic uh, because uh, these might be you know uh, paid versions of mplab okay and this one is free with uh, mplab id and uh, manager wizard finish this Awesome. So uh, it has now successfully loaded uh, MCC that is MPLAB code configurator. And here are a few windows that uh, you should be uh, knowing that this is uh, the project window and here uh, the system uh, module, pin module and interrupt module. This is by default available. So we are not going to get into that as of now. We are interested in PWM, okay? And uh, in uh, the data sheet, we have seen that it uses timer two register uh, timer two and a PWM module. So where can we find this PWM and timer module? Here in this device resource section. So in device resource section, if you scroll down, there are multiple options, right? You know, ADC, CCP, um, uh, DAC. Then there must be a timer. Yeah, here we have this timer and PWM model. So we are interested in PWM. So I'm going to select this uh, PWM5, for example, PWM5 and add that into my project. So here is this green button with this green button. You are going to add that in your project. So here we have this PWM5 available within our project. Okay. And I also need a timer two register uh, timer two. So I'm going to select this timer and there we have multiple timers available. So here I'm going to select timer two because we have seen in the data sheet that for this PWM, we need a timer two. Okay, so here also you could see, uh, let me just add that first. Awesome. So we have got now PWM uh, signal, a particular pin, which is having this PWM5 uh, available. And uh, this is timer two. Okay, so if you could see the, these tabs, this is an interrupt module, system module, DMA. Uh, we are not interested in that as of now, pin module. Yeah, we are in uh, interested in PIDM pin module and you could see that here I have this uh, particular uh, package shown here, but I am not interested in this actually. So here we have this option that is pin manager grid view. Okay, this is pin manager grid view and I'm specifically interested in the dip module. Okay, I mean like dual in line package. So here I have uh, pass possibilities to select uh, multiple, uh, you know, uh, packages so here I've selected dip and this looks familiar now here if you could see that there is green and blue uh, color available within this so green means you have configured this particular pin and blue means you have not yet configured this pin okay well, either it is to be input output or, or to be in uh, any specific function okay 
so this is blue we have not configured it and uh, we are interested in actually uh, this pwm5 if you could see here uh, yeah this this is an again an interesting interesting option that this pwm5 is available on this port a port c okay so if you just uh decide whichever pin that you should be using for this particular uh, pwm you can you you can just click you just need to click on that particular uh, you know uh, blocks box for example so if i click here that means i am using port c7 as a pwm5 how cool is that earlier if it has to be a dedicated pin i need to reroute my entire pcb you know for that particular signal but in here i have the possibility to select whichever pin i need according to my uh, you know pcb routing or my circuit design right that's an that's an interesting uh, option that we have now and this timer 2 we are not interested in using you know uh, timer 2 as an input okay we are not going to that but uh, i'm interested in uh, design and deciding all the uh, direction of the ports and here i decide to be uh, all these pins to be output okay and for sure i'm not going to uh, make this pin as an output because um, it is going to be used as pwm so i just need to simply click on multiple boxes so that it gets decided this pin uh, this port pin is used in uh, as an output right this is very easiest way of doing uh pin configurations otherwise it was really hard to uh, put all the uh, hex values within that, those particular registers right if you if you already had done any of the project you could understand what i'm talking about and if this is your first time you have a lucky one you are a lucky one no i'm interested in you know making this pin as an pwm and not as an output so let's make this let's not do let's not do uh, the spin as an output okay otherwise or mention all the pins as an output okay awesome and this particular pin is going to be a reset and here if you could see now that uh, all these pins have turned green okay all these pins have turned green that means we have already configured all of these pins as in uh, some or the other kind of the function okay and if you could see in here this is pin module pin module and pin module there are uh, you know options whether it it should be analog output and uh, what not okay but we are not inter interested in this as of now so i am closing this out and i am also closing this out yeah here we need to mention that uh, which oscillator we are going to use we are we going to use external oscillator or an or an internal oscillator so here i have possibility to select that so here uh, this particular uh, pick package has uh, internal oscillator and it is in high frequency oscillator that is um, uh, pick uh, high frequency internal oscillator and which is of 16 megahertz okay which is of 16 megahertz so, so there are four possibilities but i am going to use obvious the highest one which is 16 megahertz and clock divider is going to be four let's let's keep all of these settings as it is um i am not interested in, in any of the interrupt so i am going to close this so so th this is it right uh, with the with the with the system module okay now now we are interested in configuring pwm model and timer model okay so let's jump on to the pwm model and let's understand what we have here so here we need to mention what duty cycle i need to uh, have have for this here is the pwm period and pwm period is shown as 0 seconds why because i'm going to use this timer 2 to configure my period but i have not yet configured so let's now jump on to timer 2 and let's see uh how we can you know uh configure the timer 2 model but uh, one point i need to uh, uh take your notice uh, in uh, take your uh, attention to is here i have this notification tab now if you if you click on the notification tab uh, this is quite an interesting because uh, whichever possibilities you have uh, here uh you know uh all the warnings all the uh, errors could also be shown here so here for example it shows that pwm5 uh, and hint is uh, post scalar that is post scalar setting in timer 2 does not affect the calculated parameter in pwm model that means post scalar uh, timer post scalar setting in timer 2 is not going to affect us affect the calculation for pwm okay uh, if you already used uh, post scalar and pre scalars of the timers of a pick you could understand um but if this is your first time uh, i'm going to give you a link below 
to watch the video series so that you can be very uh, um, uh, understandable uh, what a post killer and pre killer is okay right all that all right so uh, how to configure this post killer that's what we are going to understand here is this another warning that is configure timer 2 to operate on um, uh, f oscillator by 4 to generate pwm okay so here they have given a warning a warning as well so i'm going to go on this timer 2 and here a uh, clock source now clock source i'm going to use what this f oscillator by 4 because they have mentioned it to be like this okay and once i do that that warning is going to go off right now hint is that post scalar setting is not going to decide uh, is not going to decide uh, you know pwm period okay so i'm not, not going to touch pwm uh, this post scalar setting that's what uh, i actually wanted to um, uh, mean by you know uh, doing this not to do anything with this post scalar let's not do that anything now here uh, we could see that time period what it could mention but we have seen uh, in our uh, at least for the a signal that we want to generate for servo motors servo motors needs 20 milliseconds of the period okay so i am interested in having this period to be of uh, in 20 milliseconds so i'm going to do some settings in uh, prescaler so prescaler setting if i do this that means uh, i see that uh, my time has changed if my if my prescaler setting is changed okay so you could uh, try in multiple ways now 16 millisecond definitely is not useful for us so this 128 if i do this if i make this this is uh, is going to go from 128 microseconds to 32 milliseconds 32.7 uh, six eight milliseconds so i'm but i am interested in 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 20 milliseconds so i'm going to make this as 20 millisecond okay so uh so whatever time i set here accordingly uh, the selection the resistors are, go are going to get configured now i am uh, i've already not touched the post killer okay which means uh, i'm not interested in timer interrupt so that's the we are not interested in this we need to generate the time period uh, this period uh, time period with this uh, uh, with this timer two uh, of 20 milliseconds and that's what setting we have done here and we are very good to go with the pwm setting now let's jump on to this pwm5 setting and if you could see that this period is of 19.968 and definitely you are not going to get exact 20 milliseconds but this is very very close to this 20 milliseconds so i am good to go but uh, now we are interested in what duty cycle it should have now if again i show you this 20 millisecond and for example this tw 2 milliseconds if if we set this high for 2 milliseconds this is going to go uh, at 180 degree 1.5 means 1.5 milliseconds means at 90 degree and of course 1 millisecond means 0 degree so i'm going to change my pwm period from i mean like the width of the period from um, from 1 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds i'm interested in, interested in doing 1 millisecond to 2 milliseconds now if i if i take maximum value maximum is 2 millisecond which is a 10% you know 10 percent of 20 milliseconds and uh, one millisecond is of course is a five percent of a 20 milliseconds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to understand that in this this uh, duty cycle what value this particular register has okay so if i set this to be of 10 percent uh, 10 percent duty cycle which uh, the value of this is 61 and uh, if i make this as five percent that means it is going to go 30 now this 30 value is in decimal and not in hex because uh, they have not mentioned in anything in hex so 30 to 61 uh, is my uh, value for this particular resistor okay pwm dc resistor okay uh, and how to do that that's what i'm going to show you uh, in the um, in the upcoming part but we are go we have we have done with the settings now we we need to do uh, code generation now how can how can we do that now here i have this uh, button available that is to generate code okay of this setting okay and how to do that you could see that i just scrolled this and uh, we have this generate button available so i'm going to click on this generate button now and it is going to generate me a code uh, and i've not done any of the coding as of now right it is going to generate us each and everything okay uh, that we want i have not written any of the code that's an interesting um, you know now you could see that it, it it has generated multiple these files this file and um, you know everything is set 
okay earlier there was nothing at this particular window right okay so we are good to go and we are good to generate the code uh, generate uh, the hex file out of it we are good to compile the code now let's click on this particular button clean and compile clean and build and now let's see if it builds me a come okay we have this error and this error says what this error says no rule making this null stop okay um okay uh, let's just close this mcc window uh, let's close that off and here i have this main.c and in main.c i have this uh, system generate function and this while loop okay and all of the settings are are being done in this system setting function that is it has already configured this pwm5 pwm uh, timer 2 register all the register configuration is already done okay i am good to go uh, i am interested in how can i change my uh, duty cycle so here if you could see this pwm5.c uh, c file here i have this particular function called load duty register value so this particular register value is going to be uh, set by the percentage value that what we want right so i'm i want uh, i want this value to be uh, from 30 to 60 right from 30 to 60 now accordingly from 30 to 60 if i could change this value i'm going to get the 1 millisecond to 2 millisecond uh, pulse width right awesome now uh, we have not uh, yet able to compile this what could be the issue is uh, earlier i've seen that uh, if uh, this particular file file is need to be compiled first okay so if you click on this right click on this and uh, do this compile file it is going to compile that particular file and then we'll compile the code again awesome this is this is compiled let's check if i could now compile my code awesome so uh code is compiling that means we have success successfully you know generated code out of this mcc and we are good to use this code awesome 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 so i was literally able to just configure few of the buttons and was able to generate the entire code how cool is this okay and anyway you are going to get a uh, link of the code uh, in the description box do check out do uh, download the code and uh, you know definitely use this code so uh, i've shown you how to generate but uh, how can we validate whether uh, whatever setting we have done is is working or not so there is a possibility to compile this uh, code as well i mean look to debug this code as well so i'm going to show you that so first of all i need to give some delays so that you know it could um, run for for a while so i'm going to give delay here uh, and delay value is um, function is underscore underscore delay millisecond delay underscore millisecond i'm here mentioning what a millisecond delay i want here so i'm going to make this as uh, 10 milliseconds let's do the same in while loop as well and so why, why am i doing this uh, 10 millisecond delay in while loop as well because it is uh, it is easy for an uh, for us to debug this code okay otherwise it, it would be di difficult for us i'm going to show you that uh, how it, how is it easy so if i click here on this particular line left click it is going to give me a break point or otherwise you can do is right click on that particular line and here you can mention the break point enable okay so i'm going to ma make this as break point enable and i'm no not now going to debug this code okay yeah and uh, ideally it should run the code and it should stop at the break point okay let's uh, let's see if it stops there Actually, it compiles again uh, whenever you uh, click on the debug. It is actually compiling the code again, so it takes a time. It takes time. Awesome. So we are we are at this particular line, and my code is compi uh, compiling. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm in debug mode, right? That's what I want to mention, right? So how can I uh, again verify? Now there is another cool way to verify that, and that's what I'm going to show you is. You can go on to simulator and in simulator here we have this logic analyzer okay so logic analyzer window gives you a separate window or it could be an integrated one but i have uh, actually taken this out and you just need to mention uh, from here okay if you could if i could show you again that uh, you can click on 
uh, this particular setting button and now here there is a possibility to select which particular register or uh, you know any particular register that you are interested in now i am interested in pwm5 so i've selected that and if i move this so that i am now i am now going to see live data over here and of course uh, it is not yet um, uh, configured to particular uh, values in i mean like uh, all the background oscillator values are not set so you could not see the exact uh, timing values but it is an, it, it is quite an interesting way to see whether my code is compiling or not whether it is generating the code itself or not so i keep this as um, uh the, this window at above and now what i'm doing is what i'm doing is i am let me move it a little bit up and we're going to do this as this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the code and now uh, it is going to run until the next breakpoint and since we are in loop okay so my next breakpoint is of course this itself so i'm going to run this if i click this yeah so isn't this awesome that you could see that there is an pulse width over here okay pulse width over here and it says that it is it has gone from high to low right let's do it for another way another cycle awesome so it if you could see that it is moving though this timing is not perfect uh, because we have not uh, configured our oscillator to be at specific frequency and, and so on and so forth so but it is quite interesting to see uh, to see whether your signal is getting generated or not right awesome Awesome. So we have seen that we uh, were able to uh, successfully generate code out of few settings and uh, we have also simulated, compiled it and we have seen that uh, it shows um, uh, the actual signal on the simulator window itself, right? So how cool is that? So uh, that is it with this video and I definitely uh, want you to check out with the code uh, in the dis link in the description below. Uh, write your comments, write what did you learn out of this video. I would be very pleased to read out all of your comments and uh, I, I get very excited. And if you like this video, um, please do subscribe my channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.